Hello, everyone. This is Anna Pacheco with Santa Fe 101. Um, my guest this afternoon is Peter Ferraro with Santa Fe Properties. Peter, do I have your permission to record this interview? Yes, you do. Well, great. Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much for getting a, uh, a subscription uh, to your mother for your mother on my for my other uh, website, uh, History in Santa Fe, and for also uh, down the line, you know, um, getting her a tour of Santa Fe that I would, I'm going to be very happy to go ahead and do. So I appreciate your support. And I, so I want to talk to you a little bit. I received your newsletter on uh, South Capitol and I found it really interesting. So, you know, we'll talk about, let's, I guess, let's just jump right into that. Tell me why you focus in so much, so strongly on South Capitol in, in that district in Santa Fe referred to as South Capitol, which is maybe a mile from the uh, the town square, the Santa Fe Plaza. Yeah, excellent. And thank you so much for having me this morning, Anna. And uh, my pleasure with the Santa Fe 101 for my mom and actually super excited about her taking the tour with you because um, just such a wealth of knowledge. And I, I know with her being new to Santa Fe, she's very interested in learning as much as she can about the history and the culture and things like that. So very excited about those things. Um, and thanks for having me this morning. I'm very, very grateful to be here. My focus on um, South Capitol, <clears throat> excuse me, is primarily due to me living in South Capitol. And so I've lived in South Capitol now for the past 12 years and I love the neighborhood. It's one of my absolute favorite neighborhoods in Santa Fe. And um, so that's really where I was doing this even prior to being a realtor, not at the same level in the same detail that I do now. But um, of course, living in the neighborhood, I was very active at going to open houses. I have a, um, just a natural curiosity to see what everybody's home is sort of like in the neighborhood. And it's one of the really the uh, things that I love about doing real estate in Santa Fe. And as you know, with all the uh, over 400 years of history, there's so many fascinating homes um, and what has been done to them over the years as the family would evolve. And uh, so it's just really, really fun because it's not a cookie cutter market at all. So I very much enjoy that. Well, you know, I still, um, believe it or not, you know, this is my hometown. I actually still have a first cousin who lives in South Capitol. He has lived there. He still lives in the house that he was, uh, you know, I'm sure, I think he's probably born in the hospital, but as an infant, he has been in yeah. the same home for over 70 years. That's and so when I... When I saw your newsletter and I and just so like right around the corner from where he lives, it, it was on Gomez Road, a property just sold for, I think, one point two million dollars. And I thought to myself, can you believe this? I mean, this is like an area that I as a little kid, I used to go to my aunt's house, you know. So is is property so expensive in that area because of its proximity to the plaza or what would you guesstimate? Great. That's a great question. And uh, not un um, not uncommon to find families who are still living in their home for you know 70 years or even longer, which is which is wonderful. Um, my I do think that the proximity to downtown in general is uh, part of the reason for the values that you see in South Capitol. Um, it has the neighborhood itself just has so many wonderful things to offer, like proximity to really everything. It's easy to get to almost every store. It's easy to get to all the roads, in my opinion, much more so than say the east side. Um, it has a great abundance of diversity. And I mean that in price points, uh, the people who live in South Capitol, the age ranges, um, just everything. You've got commercial properties, you've got residential properties, you've got churches, you've got hotels, you've got businesses. It's just the, the neighborhood is so varied and mixed that um, and those things, I think, do contribute to the value. Uh, but I'd say the proximity is probably the uh, primary driver. Well, I think what's also interesting is like, so for instance, my cousins, where my cousin lived, it was my aunt's and my uncle's home. And my uncle actually built the home probably 80 years ago. And so it's Adobe. So I, so I think in, the, in South Capitol, you will find the older Adobe homes, but then you find other types of homes. Um, you know, I guess they're frame houses or something. So I think there's kind of a mix. It's not just one type of home. Is that correct? 
That is correct. And uh, oftentimes you'll find a mix within each home. So Pentile is very common in South Capitol. And uh, my own personal home is was built as a frame home, but there is an Adobe addition on the home. So that's not uncommon. The home might be Adobe with a frame addition or vice versa. There'll be a section of Pentile. Um, so again, it just goes to the diversity. You'll have every architectural style represented in South Capitol as well. You have what certainly Pueblo style, which is very common here in New Mexico and territorial and those styles, but you'll have um, bungalow craftsman style homes. You've got pitched roofs, you've got flat roofs, you've got brick homes, which is not very common here. That's more of a Victorian sort of style. So you have, um, it's just really diverse. And, and for me, <laughs> I love it. And, and I think, so South Capitol isn't part of the historic district, but, it, but it's close enough to it. So there aren't, there aren't some of the regulations. Like the, I always joke with people. I say, if you live in the historic part of uh, Santa Fe, you have to ask permission to change a light bulb. So you don't have, so South Capitol does not have to, is not part of that historic district where everything is, everything is kind of monitored. Is that correct? Well, it's, it is a valid point. And there actually is a pretty good, section of South Capitol that is in the historic district. It's the Don Gaspar historic district. And uh, that goes as far south as Coronado. It's interesting because the north side of Coronado is historic. The south side of Coronado is not historic. And so, is that because some of the, the homes on one side are older than the other side or? I, great question. I don't know the answer. That's where the city decided to draw the line and said, you know, this is considered uh, historic. And it, I, in my uh, loose understanding or knowledge, I would say it's probably something like that. It's probably by date, like the construction sort of stopped at this point, um, it, you know, with the dates that they consider to be historic. And then beyond that, they said all the construction beyond that was, was not historic because Don Fernando, uh, not Don Fernando, Lomita is the same way. The north side is historic, the south side is not. Uh, my street is Don Cubero, also historic. At, when you get to the far north end, I'm on the far south end. I am not in the historic myself. And then, of course, you realize that uh, there's the different levels of historic that also you ha would have to deal with if you wanted to make changes. So, and what is that? I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. What are the oh, levels? Uh, and I'm probably not going to go over all of them here, but they have, for example, they'll have contributing, non contributing, significant. Um, so the higher the level of historic importance, the, the more restrictive it would be for you to want to make changes. And my um, understanding of it as well is those would be changes to the exterior facade that faces the street is the most critical part that they're concerned about. Now, when you say there, so who is this group that monitors the historic uh, neighborhoods in Santa Fe? Yeah, super question. I'm sorry. So there is a historic preservation board here, mm -hmm. and, and that is who um, you would have to work with to make changes. And do they go around the neighborhoods like, you know, checklist, you know, this this mailbox is purple, not a good idea. Or how do they how do they monitor this? Uh, a great question. And I don't have a full understanding of that. My perception of it is that when people want to make changes and go in for permits is is really how it's monitored. I don't oh, I see that makes perfect sense. That's how they do it. OK, I don't see people coming through the neighborhood and knocking on someone's door and saying, like, like your example, this uh, your mailbox is purple and it doesn't comply. It'd be my experience. I've had clients as well as friends who want to even change their sidewalk on it. Um, and it has to be, uh, it has to match, you know, one of the three colors that they would approve for the sidewalk for the neighborhood. Well, it sounds like kind of a pain, but in the long run, it's, it's, it adds more value to the neighborhood and it's good to be able to preserve that. And before I forget, since you mentioned Don, uh, Don Gasper, I have to let everybody know that Don Gasper was my great, great, great grandfather. His name was Don Gaspar Ortiz. So that street is named after my family. I just had to mention that. And I know that you took my uh, history art and uh, Santa Fe history art and culture class uh, for the Santa Fe Realtors Association a few months ago. And what, do you remember what I told you about Don, Don? You, so you live on Don Camaro, uh, Cubero, there's Don Fernando, there's Don Gasper, there's Don Diego, all those are all those Dons are in your in South Capitol. Do you remember what I told you about that? 
Yes. And I don't remember, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it's, um, this is my, what I can remember is it's a, um, a level of distinction that the community would put on very important people. Some, is that, and, and well, for that's the woman, close enough. That's close <laughs> enough. So in the very old, old days, so, you know, the Spanish, you know, they colonized this area in the very, very old days, we know when Spain back in 1492 and they let the Spaniards, you know, let Christopher Columbus go off. And then later on, you know, when they, they finally get to New Mexico, 1598, Don Juan de Oñate was the, the Spanish nobleman that came out. So all over the Spanish empire where they were conquering all these different areas, areas of the world, it was the, no, the people of nobility that were given these, you know, the, the, the honor of doing this. And so Don is, uh, stand, it's a uh, Spanish honorific, which stands for de origen noble, of noble origin. So there you go. So you're living on a, I don't know who Don Cabrera was, but you're living on a noble street there. So, um, and, and also, I'm sorry, Anna, let me just to go back to Don Gaspar for a second. Also, something that is interesting about that street, at least for me, is it's the divider between the east and west for the city. So everything to the east of Don Gaspar is considered, you know, X, Y, Z east. And everything to the west of Don Gaspar is, uh, is is considered west. See, and I didn't know that. And I know that Don Gaspar goes all the way. I guess it begins right at San Francisco Street, in the, just off the heart of the plaza. But what I think it found yeah. amazing is that it's a really long street. It goes all the way past uh, the hospital or to the hospital, St. Vincent Hospital. So that's probably a good, what, two or three mile street or something. Yep. That's kind of unusual for Santa Fe because with the exception of maybe surreal, some of our big thoroughfares, uh, moat fair, thor thoroughfares rather. Um, most of the streets aren't that long, but Don Gasper, for being an old street, it's pretty darn long. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it, and and it it changes as it goes, which is not uncommon in Santa Fe. But uh, so Don Gaspar is also the main one way, in my opinion, leaving the city, heading south out of out of downtown. And Galisteo, of course, is the main one way heading Coming up. in coming into downtown. Exactly. And so since, since you're kind of a, so you're, you're an expert on South Capitol, are you seeing now um, more uh, younger families coming in with children? Because I know, you know, is, you know, it, it's, an, it's tended to be an older demographic, because like I said, my, you know, my cousin's already in his 70s, we're all old now. But we when we were growing up, there were tons of kids. But what type of um, families or people that are, are, are buying houses in South Capitol now? Yeah, great question. I'm seeing real, again, here to the diversity, I'm seeing, um, I see single folks buying in South Capitol. I do see a lot of families. My, my, my own daughter's 11 now. When we moved into the neighborhood, not a ton of friends for her. Many more kids in the neighborhood now. Couples, older people, again, super diverse. So I'm seeing um, all of those people moving into South Capitol. And what I'm also seeing, Anna, is a big wave um, when people come into South Capitol, they tend to put energy into the home that they are purchasing. So they'll, uh, and I, what I mean by that is renovations, improvements, things like that. And that's very common. Well, th and that makes sense because basically this neighborhood, again, it's at least 80 years old, at least. And yeah, so a lot and of maybe, these houses, they're going to need up, they're going to need to uh, work on them because they've been around a while. Yeah, absolutely. I have a friend who lives in a house in a house uh, on the corner of Senna and Don Cabrera, and it was built in the twenties. So it's, I mean, there's there's homes that are you know a hundred ish years old now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to ask you one more question, and then we'll, we won't stay on South Capitol if, uh, during okay. this entire interview. But this is kind of a I have a question about this. Is it's like why are the streets so awful? Throughout, I mean, it's like, you know, where I live, I mean, it's a much newer neighborhood, but you know, they, every, I don't know, every 10 years they pave it and it's nice and smooth. Whereas uh, in South Capitol, it is just, just like it's patchwork. It's yeah. like, wh why is that? Great question. And again, this would be my, my perception in, uh, for many years, they used, um, I, I believe a lot of it has to do with utilities and sewer, sewer line work. Um, for many years in South Capitol, they used the product called Orangeburg to as the sewer line, which was really um, sort of a clay composite. Barricada pipes. I had that at my house. It was a disaster, right? And they, over time, they would just disintegrate and wear away. So many, many of the homes, and this is one of the things that you want to look for if you're purchasing a home in South Capitol. But um, so many, many of the homes over the years, as they've replaced the sewer lines, they have to cut the road and then, you know, fix the sewer line and then repatch the road. So there are, the roads had a lot of patching. 
And you know what else too, Anna? The uh, sidewalks tend to be pretty. They're kind uh, of like buckling and. They're just, kind of, yes, from 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 all the years of people planting trees, and now they've gotten they're kind of uh, undulating, and 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 you'll find many many. Many people, and it's a much, very much a walking neighborhood. You can drive through the neighborhood anytime. There's people walking all the time, but oftentimes we'll be walking in the street because it's just easier than trying to navigate the uh, the sidewalks. But it's, it's definitely it's it's definitely a great neighborhood. I mean, you you're within walking distance, not just of the plaza, but of Canyon Road, all the restaurants and galleries, the rail yard. Uh, you know, Whole Foods is right there. Yep. You can walk Grocery to Trader stores. Joe's. I mean, in terms of proximity, it's if you're coming from a a, you know, a city like New York or, a, you know, one of those urban environments where walking is kind of the norm where you do a lot of walking, then South Capitol, you'd feel right at home because you basically can walk to just about everything from there. True. So that's, then that's one of the few neighborhoods where I live, you know, you can't really, you know, you can't walk that much. And so, and that's, so it's kind of an, it's kind of, that's what makes it, I think, uh, special. And um, yeah. yeah, and but so what do we? But you know the houses. I mean, like I said, I saw a house on on Gomez. It was like oh, what one point two million dollars? I mean, that's a lot of money. But I think. But I mean, so and I know there's a low inventory of houses. But um, are you seeing uh, more movement in South Capitol now? Or very active um, here. But I do think South Cap South Capitol also reflects the greater Santa Fe market in many many ways. So. The lack of inventory, for example, is uh, is paramount. But there's homes that are overpriced in South Capitol, just like there are in the regular um, market of Santa Fe. And so you think is that what you're saying? You think do you feel that uh, real estate is overpriced in parts of Santa Fe right now? I just think I, it's well, super expensive because this is my hometown. But I don't. I, know. I can see that for sure. Um, there, I just I just feel like there are there's usually homes overpriced in almost every market. There's homes that are well-priced also, but your example of the 1.2, I'm not exactly sure which property on Gomez that is, excuse me. Um, but there's also lots of really good value in South Capitol as well. There's homes that are on half acre and there's homes that are on a fifth of an acre. There's homes that are on more than an acre. I actually know where there's a, 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 a lot, I don't know what happened, but my, my former principal, it was on Coronado, it's uh -huh. a huge lot and they, and they owned it next door to their house and they never wanted anybody to live next to them. So I wonder, yeah. I'm sure it's somebody's gonna, that's gonna be, that's gotta be, I don't even know if it's for sale, but that has gotta be prime real estate right now. Yeah, and you'll find in, so many interesting things like that where uh, you, what you see from the street is not the full story. As you go back into the property, then there's there could be an entire community back there of uh, townhomes or condominiums that have been developed. And that's not uncommon also for other parts of Santa Fe, but, uh, but, but just so fun because it's just, it's like a little Christmas gift and you're, as you unwrap it, you don't know what you're going to find. And, and uh, so I, I, well, I always I, say that, you know, it, for me, again, I'm a local, so Santa Fe does feel expensive, but I mean, you're getting so much for your money here. You just, you know, there's just, you just can't, can't compare to other places where it's, it's an expensive, but you're not getting as much. So that's, so, you know, we're getting, we're, we're, well, one of the things, to, if, go ahead. If, if I can comment on that, on a, a, one of the things I always try to keep in mind when we talk about expense um, for Santa Fe because certainly for other parts, if you compare it to other parts of maybe the southern part of New Mexico, it can seem very expensive. But if you compare it to other Rocky Mountain towns, then it starts to become, it starts to look actually quite affordable. So. Well, and if you compare it to like, say, I mean, for, you know, for a million dollars, what would you get in Midtown Manhattan? You know, not much like, or, or right. I don't I mean, even know San Francisco. So if you're, if you're coming from one of the coastal cities, you get so much for your money here. Um, you know, we're getting close to the end of our, uh, our okay. minute interview. Do you want to talk about, I know you, you're a specialist for the South Capitol area. If somebody is watching this interview and, you know, would you recommend any other neighborhoods for people to at least kind of start their search in? Is there, are there other areas that you're fond of? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I'm very fond of the historic East side. I love Casa Solana. Um, there's, there's many wonderful neighborhoods around Santa Fe. De Vargas Heights is another great neighborhood. Um, so Lots of great neighborhoods. What, where, what, what part of town are you located in? I'm in the Candlelight Homes. I'm okay. right off of Zia at St. Yeah. Francis. So this neighborhood, and this is really funny that you mentioned that, but so this neighborhood is, um, 
uh, I mean, this house is a, probably was built in the 1980s. And I, and I had to replace all my plumbing about, God, 15 years ago, because those, the pipes were all clay. I mean, they just disintegrate and it's even like, the, you know, the sore pipes and everything. So even, so huh. even houses that aren't like, like as old as South Capitol, even back in the 1980s, they were still using this, these clay pipes. Interesting. Is, even yeah, in the so 80s, those are the things yeah. you should, yeah, people should look at, you know, yeah. into an older home, look at the first thing that everybody always does is the roof. Cause we have so many flat roofs here. So the roof has to be definitely, that would be the first thing if I'm looking for a house here. And then I would check about the, the, the plumbing, you know, the pipes, because Great that's point. another, you know, yeah. Yeah. Anything and there were other, sorry, there were other products that were used in construction that have now come um, to be known as having defects. And so we always want to check for those as well. Right. Regarding plumbing, high tech, for example. Well, good. Well, you know, I, um, I'm going to look, thank you for putting me on your, uh, on your, on your database to start receiving the South Capitol newsletter. Cause I found it very informative and interesting. And so if anybody's listening, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, once this, uh, once we upload your interview to the, um, to Santa Fe 101.com, um, it, I guess we can put a link or something. If somebody wants to subscribe to the South Capitol newsletter that you put out, do you put this out monthly? A quarterly. I do it quarterly. And quarterly. Thank you so much. I appreciate that feedback. And that would be wonderful. I would love for uh, people to sign up for that. So, yes. Because, I'll you know, if somebody's kind of thinking about maybe moving here, um, you know, the South Cal, it's definitely up. It's prime um, in terms of having access to so much of Santa Fe. So real good. Well, then I am going to wrap this up. I want to thank you, Peter. I'm, I can't wait to meet your mother. Oh, and I, I won't say her whole name, but it, well, I'll tell you, it, it, remind, it reminds me of the Godfather 2. Do you remember the Godfather 3? Zaza? Uh -huh. Do you remember I that? There was I don't a, remember that in Godfather Three, but I'm a I'm a fan of the Godfather series for sure. Well, anyway, there's uh, there's a uh, one of the characters. I think it's when this and uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Andy Garcia. He's his last name is Zaza. And so uh. when I saw your mom's name, I said, "Yeah, the Godfather." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's her, yeah, that's her grandma nickname. So she loves it. That's cool. Well, listen, thanks again. And I'll have you back on in 2021. We'll talk about other aspects of, of, of what you're doing here in Santa Fe in terms of real estate. So again, Peter Ferrara, Santa Fe Properties, and he is an expert in the South Capitol neighborhood of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Take Thank care. you so much for having me today, Anna. Thank you.